that 2015 team was the most dysfunctional team I've ever been on in my life. Really? Unbelievable. The, the most dysfunctional team I've ever been in my life. You would, you would not believe some of the stories that were going on on that team. Guys, we are here at Punchline Pod, presented by Snapback Sports. I am Marlon Humphrey. This is Jack Settle. Man, we are here to have a great time, but we have a very special guest. How would you describe this guest we have today? Man of many talents. I was actually curious, like Reggie Bush, VY, Johnny, football. And then I was looking at the accolades and the mm-hmm. rep, and I was like, I wonder if my kids will be like RG3, college legend. That's, that's where my brain goes to. Now, media personality and, <laughs> and dominating that world, too. I mean, you've done it at every level, on the field, off the field. So that's how I would describe him. Friend, teammate, brother. Friend, teammate. Hater. <laughs> Hater. Um, Clickbaiter, RG3, <laughs> government name Robert Griffin III. Yes. No yes. middle name, huh? Lee. Up, government name Robert, Robert Lee Griffin III. Yeah. Yes. RG, yes. how we doing today? I'm doing great, you know? Uh, you're killing it, man. Not only on the field, but off the field doing this as well. So I'm very excited to be here and work with Marlo. We've actually recorded as many pods as games played this week. Yeah, it's been, oh, a, it's wow. been a huge... Oh, he's throwing shots off the jump. good thing on jump. the one career, bad yeah. thing on the other career. Bounce back year. It bounced back year. This starts it off. How does it feel to be in Viva Las Vegas for the Super Bowl? What have you been kind of up to this week and how's it been going? No, it's, it's been great. I mean, I'm operating right now on three hours of sleep. Ooh. Uh, last night was was a banger. Okay. Banger. Went to the uh, T-Pain, T-Pain concert. Was Dang. it T-Pain? Who's that? I don't know who that is. <laughs> T- I know who T-Pain is, though. But three hours of sleep, you know, sometimes my brain's not operating. But no, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> I have it on live on TikTok, giving my TikTok followers a chance to watch the concert uh, at 2.30 in the morning. So on the East Coast, that's 5.30 in the morning. So I saw a couple people message me saying, hey, I'm at, I'm at a job site right now, and uh, you're still partying in Vegas. So... <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> is, T- is T-Pain having like a small resurgence Yeah, because he cut the auto-tune. And now he's just like using the real voice and the voice Bro, is Bro, he crazy. can really sing. Crazy. I listen to he could better. Al- yeah, he could he- always sing, but he's really coming into his singing era. Yeah. And I think it's awesome. So he's, he's not having a, not a small, but huge resurgence. It's interesting because, you know, we're following T. So T-Pain's a friend. Uh, oh. Just kind of came out of nowhere. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we're following T-Pain around the, the hotel you know, going the back alleyways to get to the performance. <laughs> oh, you were like in his camp last oh, night. Oh, we were in the T Pain camp. Oh, you're him. Teddy okay, Pender I didn't ass know you were. down camp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all that. I didn't know you so were. So I look him. at Grete and I'm like, it's my wife, in case anybody was wondering who that is. She's over there. She's Dude, beautiful. I do She's say incredible. your name wrong. Beautiful on the inside, not just on the outside. So Grete. Yeah, Grete. So I, I look oh, at her and Greta. I said, Are we really following T Pain? Through the hotel right now, like this is how did my life get here? But <laughs> that's <laughs> it was kind pretty of fire. Cool. I'm a little bit jealous. Uh, but, um, <laughs> So it was okay. Backstage with T Pain. Yep, yep. And how many how many songs did he do? Ooh, that was good. Like I think it's his residency now. So he did about 10, 12 songs. He was he was lit. Oh, he did a real oh, he, show. Oh, he did a real show. And he just dropped a song. So I know it sounds like a T Pain promo, but he uh, he just dropped a song called <laughs> Dreaming, and he played that as the last one. He it was him literally singing the whole the whole song. So he's really doing it big, man. I listened to his. Uh, I played it in the weight room. Was it ten- Tennessee Whiskey? He, okay. he sung that song. Today. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really good. I'm a big fan. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a guy that likes... I don't listen to music. Okay. Really, honestly. You I don't? I ride in silence, yeah. actually. Okay. I'm but interested here. I do like when people are singing songs with more from the raw voice. Okay. Live type stuff. Yep. And it's just that one's just good, man. I think I, I I try to sing with it. I I think that I sound very similar. Oh, um, but are your vocals did you warm know right can now? Actually, sing. Yeah, literally. Can you sing better than Justin Tucker? Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I okay. Was, I was yeah. gonna say no. But okay. I needed that boost. I needed yeah. that boost. See, thank you very much. You need that boost. Um, yeah. sing, <laughs> sing Tennessee whiskey. Give us a line. I actually have to practice. Oh my okay. God. Then give me a line of a song that you yeah. are confident singing. 
I'm well, we're uh, all going, we're national. all going on four hours of sleep. Here. Oh, so see what happened. He, was, I got you. If right. the Ravens had won the FC Championship, he was going to sing the national anthem. That is on my Super Bowl? That yeah. is on my bucket list for yeah. Super Bowl shenanigans. Yeah. Okay, I kind of want to hear. Um, oh, give him a, give him one line. Come on. I just <clears throat> I don't. Oh, say it's just the four hours of sleep. We're both. That's just, super simple. Like your voice doesn't. Re- you got to rest. Can your voice. you see? see Come on now. See, but you had. Like probably more sleep than me. Last nah, time. three hours. You just like, said but three yeah, hours. You got more than me. You said four. I three is less than four. So <laughs> <laughs> basically, Marlon's not singing. <laughs> that too. All right, we we love hearing the draft draft day mm. story. Oh, okay. Let's let's hear your now. Obviously, you okay. knew you were going to be a top guy, but let's number, <laughs> number two. This yeah. is the highest pick we've ever. This is the highest. To. Yeah, we we we're, this is really? a treat for us. Yeah. It's a treat wow. for yeah. us. I am so it's a so treat grateful for us. to be. Let's the hear your pick draft the pod? little little bit of pre draft and then draft day. Yes. Story. Okay, so. All right, let's get let's get into it. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. So first of all. Like doing media and TV, like I hope you also like you had the whole Belichick situation thing going on. But <laughs> I, ho- I hope that you understand the power that we have with yeah. the mic in front of us and like how we can uplift the guys and yeah. not tear them down. Doesn't mean you can't be critical, right? I say that because when I went into the draft process, they told me that I was five ten. Every talking head on TV is saying, "Oh, there's no way he's six foot tall." And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm six two. Hey, they're saying you're five I'm, he's, not, he's not. He's not. He's gonna weigh. He's not gonna weigh two twenty. He's not gonna be six foot. He's five. He's five ten. He's not as fast as they say he is. He's a track guy, but he's a long speed track guy. You know, he's a four hundred guy. He's gonna run a four eight out there. I'm like, damn. And like when you're that young, I was you know twenty one, twenty two years old, and you're hearing all this stuff, and it's not as you're, you guys are used to it now. Yeah. Back then, we weren't used to hearing all that stuff. So I go into the process, and I'm training at API in Arizona. And I, it's not API anymore. It's Exos. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, damn, am I 6'2"? <laughs> Shit, am I 220? Am I a 4'4 guy? Like, And some of that like creeps into your brain. So when I got one day into training, I just focused like, all right, I'm going to be taller than 6'2". <laughs> I'm going to run faster than a 4'4". And I'm going to weigh more than 220. So I ended up weighing 224. I ran uh, 438 or 437, um, and then I also weighed 224 pounds. So I kind of took it, that approach to that process, and I, my advice to the guys that are going to go through it this year is don't listen to any of that stuff because it'll creep into your brain and make you start thinking differently about yourself. Um, when it comes to the whole process and everything, I got a great great situation or story with Terry Shea, who's a longtime uh, NFL assistant and, and was an offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. He was my quarterback coach. So we get close to the draft, and he used to play this card game with me. Uh, Hey, pick a card, do this, do that. So he puts out, he has these three NFL cards, and he says, all right, pick an NFL card. I pick the card. It's a Chris Cooley Washington Redskins card. Wow. He turns it over. He's like, that's the team you're going to play for. Now, at this time, Washington had not traded with the Rams for the the second pick. So I'm like, how am I going to? Is this man telling me I'm going to fall oh, in man. the draft? Like, like being disrespectful. I'm bro. like, damn, we'll coach. I'm like, what's going on here? Literally the next day, Washington traded for the second pick in the draft. And I, I was still going through the draft process, and obviously we all want to be drafted number one overall. I kind of had a feeling that Andrew was going to go to Indy. Um, but for him to play that card game with me that, that night at dinner and then for Washington to make that trade, I'm like, okay, well, did you know? <laughs> Were all three cards Washington, Washington Redskins cards? Is this the game? But he ended up, you know, predicting that for me. And then flash forward two years ago, I think, was Kenny Pickett and Ritter and those guys. I ended up predicting where Ritter and Pickett were going to get drafted the sa- almost the same way, just with socks. I I so I had them that. pick a number one through whatever, and I had three, like five or six teams laid out of socks. And Ritter ended up picking the number for the Falcons, and Pickett ended up picking the number for the Steelers. So in a weird Twilight Zone type of deal, it was like a full, you know, full circle moment for me. Um, but yeah, as far as the draft goes, it was a little anticlimactic personally. I wish I wouldn't have known where I was going, so I could have that true, authentic cry moment. Yeah. That you saw, like C.J. Stroud when he got drafted. Like, I'm sure he might have known, but he had a real authentic, 
reaction because there was so much skepticism going on about him and can he read a defense his and score. what's his cognitive yeah, score? Yeah. Like, F that's cognitive score. Like, <laughs> like you said, he's not a test taker. He's a football player. But I knew where I was going the whole time. So it so, was more of just smiles and I had a good time. So you knew, like, just off that or just being that they traded up and the base hit, clearly it was happening. Yeah, I mean, they told my agent they were oh, going to so draft they, me. Oh, so and, it, like, too. whether Indy picked me <clears throat> or didn't, they were going to draft me at two if I was there. Okay, like, okay. no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So much so that my agent tried to get me to not do my pro day. Mm. So this because, all happened. Because it was locked. Yes, this all, ha hurt or this all happened. Bad, yeah, bad I think it happened right before the combine. You got to check the dates or something. But I go to the combine. He's like, I don't even think you should do the combine. I'm like, why? I'm going to come out here and put on a show. I want to I wanna be the first pick. Like, if I go run 4-3, I, I ran 4-3, jump 39 and a half vertical. 10, 3 or whatever in the broad. I'm like, I'm going to go put on a show. We're going to have a good time. And he's like, yeah, I don't think you should do it. So I did it. And then for my pro day, he told me don't do the pro day. But you know how pro days are. It's not even about you at that pro day. It's about the the guy who didn't get a ton of reps but is a senior. Yeah. And you know he's super talented. And if a team sees him, he might get signed. Yeah, and if you don't do it, they And if you don't leave. do it, they're not coming. They're not yeah. coming to the pro day. They're so I, I decided to do the pro day. We had a great time, played music the whole time. And, and did that help me go number two overall? No, not at all. I mean, I walked around with Mike Shanahan at my pro day, and he was walking me around like I was already his quarterback. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, I knew I was going to Washington if I didn't get picked first. I kind of had a feeling that, you know, the demographics of the two teams, let's just put it that way. The Indianapolis Colts, you know what that city is composed of. And then there's the Washington Redskins, which is Chocolate City. Like, it was just meant to be. Andrew <laughs> Luck was going to go to the Colts, and I was going to go to Chocolate City and not play in Chocolate City because <laughs> we practice in Virginia and play in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea how to respond to that. It's okay. Listen, they 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 got their guy, and, and, we, had, and we had fun my rookie year in Washington. It how, just didn't work out. How serious were you about trying to buy the team? Oh, no, that was dead. I was dead, dead yeah. at serious. No, I, I, listen, I, I was under, uh, uh, not a cease and desist, but like, a, what's, what's NDA, it called? NDA, an NDA. Yeah. There you go. I was under an NDA. So after I said, I put out that tweet about the money uh, being ready to go and, and buy the team, that's yeah. not my money. I don't have that much money. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> don't we all wish we had like $400 million? <laughs> but I didn't have that. But there were people who had contacted me, verified funds, did all that, and they yeah. wanted to be able to buy into a group that was going to be buying it. So... I ended up getting under an NDA with the Josh Harris group. And, and you know, I work with them in, in certain capacities, but I'm not an owner yeah. of the commanders. And uh, it's still something that I want to do. I think player empowerment and being able to, to own teams, you know, after your playing career is something that that really should be focused on. So that was not a joke. It's not something that I, I took took lightly. Yeah. I had a lot of call. I was on a lot of calls <laughs> that I was not ever anticipating being on at 33 years old. Yeah. Um, so it was a really cool experience for me. I'm really happy uh, for Josh Harris that they ended up getting getting the team and and have been uh, honored to to work with them. They brought me back in and, and kind of yeah. threw their arms around me because for a long time I, I I felt more like I was a Baltimore Raven yeah. um, than than a Washington Commander. But they've done a really nice job of of making everybody feel like it's a home again. What do you think about that Commander's name? Think they're going to change it? Actually, I don't know. I might. You might. Listen, you sound, you're still under NDA. Yeah. No, 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 no. Listen, well, you I, might know some actual stuff. I don't that know. Really... Like that stuff that they, we didn't talk about yeah. uh, at all. And 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 there's a big conspiracy theory out there. I was talking to PFT from uh, Part of My Take about how Josh Harris hasn't worn mm -hmm. the commander's name. He's worn the logo, the W logo, and he's worn you know burgundy attire, but he hasn't actually wore the commander's name. So PFT thinks that they're going to change the name. I don't. I, if you were owner, if, if I was, if it had gone through. Oh, if I was, I mean, listen. Even if it had gone through, I wouldn't have owned enough of the team to have a say. Yeah, but, but, but what if <laughs> right, they let you? If they're like Robert, we're putting you in charge yeah. of, of the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's getting changed. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was, team, I was team Red Wolves. Okay. Because here's here's the thing with Redskins. Once you change that, I do believe there's no going back. Yeah. You the reason for the change makes it to where you you just can't go back to that. Um, but a, a big contingent, or should I say a loud contingent of the fan base wanted Red Wolves. So I was a Red Wolves guy. I actually think Hogs is the best name because they were the Hogs yeah, yeah. back in the glory days with that offensive line. There's so much interconnectedness there. I would just call them the Washington Hogs. 
You know, we're gonna hog the ball. We're gonna hog Super Bowls. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I think that's a I think that's a really great name. Oh, Will no. they do it? I don't know. Um, I really don't know. I know the fans don't like don't like. Come on, who wants to be called the Commies? You know what I'm saying? Like Commanders. The, the Commanders. It is in DC. They're gonna command. They sound like a government. We're gonna, type we're gonna deal. command victories, right? <laughs> what's the what's Man, the mascot? Hall just needs, what's the mascot's name? Major Tutty. <laughs> you see, I like you're not listen. Like not that. Not listen. Like that. Not no. listen. Did you see you the reaction? Like that? That's horrible. Did you, I like did you see Tutty. the reaction and of everyone in the room? He's a I did big not king. know that that I'm was even there. Tutty. I didn't know that. Is this my this is my camera? Major Tutty, I want you to know I have nothing against you. Did you hear Did you hear the reaction of everyone in the room? Oh, I didn't know that, that was to there. me. That's what's going on right now. People are laughing at the name. They're laughing at the team. Oh, and it, it is a hog. Yeah. Major Tutty is a hog. Major Tutty is a, a hog. Pig. I like Major Tutty. His name. Okay, his, I like his the name hog. should yeah. be Major Hog, a hog, or whatever. Imagine Lieutenant Hog, a big hog. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Dude, Admiral Hog. I don't something. Would they give him a big hog? Warthog. You think? Warthog. You know what I'm saying? Is that what you say? Oh, they they Warthog. So yeah, yeah. Hog just seems so short. Hog, yeah. Major Tutty, though. But you can't put nothing up. Because he's trying to score touchdowns. Maybe Wild Hogs? Red Hog. Well, Wild Hogs would be like the movie <laughs> with Martin Lawrence on the office. <laughs> I, I, hey, Hogs are... I've hunted some, Hog, some Wild Hogs. They're, they're, are, you, are you Team Hogs? I, I'm... I mean, they're ferocious. Yeah. A hog will run you slap dead over. Yes, they you know, will. Do you have Hogs on Marquee? No, I go down to my... Uh, is he my cousin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he's my cousin. I think he's family though. Anyway, I go to somebody that's part of my family. We we try to get the hogs off his place, and that I mean, you have to put two bullets in him. Thing. Sometimes them, I shot one. He just kept going. Bro, it's like I paralyzed his back legs. So he was he was he dragging himself off. Yes. Oh my. He scurried off just the two front, and then I couldn't find him. It got dark, and then we couldn't find him. And well, that was pretty dark anyway, so it's kind of fitting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dark. But yeah, I mean, I hog is tough. Mm. Mm. All right, well, what I do you what do you think of Commanders? Major Tutty is really bad though. <laughs> I really don't like that. I'm but sorry. I do like, I like that he is a hog. Yeah, I like Major. I, didn't know he was I love a hog. the fact that I he's like a that hog. they made him a little fat too. Yeah, yeah. You know, like so he looks like a pig. Yeah, yeah like a hog. His waist is snatched though. <laughs> His waist is what? <laughs> his waist is actually snatched. <laughs> like he got yeah, a great physique. He's got a great physique. Got a great physique. Bro, look at his waist. He's got oh my god! He, oh, crazy. he got one of them. Uh, his waist trainer. You know what I'm saying? Like they go to the gym. You're yeah, like, oh, yeah, this guy yeah, can't he's, play because he's, be, he's got um, these heavy set up top. You know what I mean? Yeah, I never really thought com- commanders. In, it never seemed that bad. I did like the it's, Red Wolves though. Red Wolves was a good one. It's commanders. I, I feel like a lot of fans are indifferent to Commanders. Football team, like the Washington football team, the joke then was like, hey, who do you play for? <laughs> the football team. No, seriously, who do you play for? The football, the football no team. Player. You know, I, I, so, I will like, say, I, I get it, but... Fo- going for the soccer way and just being... That's what I'm saying. That's uh, yeah. what the fans, once they took away the football team, then they're like, oh, well, I actually like that yeah. because it was more like European soccer where it's a football club. So now it's Washington FC. You know what I mean? Yeah. That to me, like there's so many different ways that they could go. Uh, I think but commanders is not. But commander, like, I feel like they kind of forced it. They should have waited a little. I feel like because then they go through a phase of when they were. Or was that just to the? It fans? was no. It was Redskins, Washington. It was football Washington team, football team, and then it went oh, to so, Commanders. Okay, so it was right. listen. Let's be honest here, guys. It was a, it was a last second fu from Dan Snyder to the team. Mm. He gave him the he gave him the name that nobody wanted. That was that didn't come up on the top five or whatever or whatever top three from the fan base, and he and he named them that. And, and here's the other thing: it cost like. Millions. I'm not talking like you're talking like hundreds of millions of dollars to change a team name. So it's a lot of legal. If paperwork. Josh Harris and them are coming in, it's not just legal paperwork. It's their jerseys. They're having designs, to burn. They're having yeah. to bite the bullet on more than just a house, Marlon. <laughs> more, than, more, than, more than just a house that you didn't like. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. Like if the, if Commanders continues to be the name, I'll still support the team. I'm going to yeah. support them no matter what. I'm a I'm a Josh Harris fan, and and I believe what they're going to do with Dan Quinn is going to be phenomenal. So. Um, but if you're asking my honest opinion, I'm always going to give you my honest opinion, and I think a lot of fans want the name changed. If you could pick what team you wanted to play for, what yeah. team would it be? It would have been the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos. Wow. Yeah, so I was a Bronco fan growing up. Um, I'm a military kid. Grew up. I went to three first grades. Uh, born three in, first grades? Three first grades. Born in Japan, so I'm, I'm Blackanese. How long um, were you in Japan? 
Bro, three, you were serious when you said two that. years. I'm serious. Yeah, I was born in Japan. Born like, in Japan. That's on my list. And and I and I'm clearly joking when I say I'm black and knees because like neither my mom or my dad are Japanese in any regard. <laughs> but uh, they are both born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. So I moved around a bunch, and so I didn't have like a native team to where I was at. So when I got to Coppers Cove, Texas, everybody's a cowboy fan. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but I'm like I'm like a little bit of a rebel. So I just didn't want to be a Cowboys fan at that time. And the Broncos were hot, 97, 98, 99. Um, I think it's more so 97, 98. Elway, Rod Smith, Ed McCaffrey, Terrell Davis, Shannon Sharp, Tom Nalen was the center. I knew everybody on the damn roster. And I was a huge Bronco fan. So when I was coming out, the Broncos were terrible. Terrible. And you know who ruined my Broncos matchup with the chance for them to draft me? Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow comes in, leads him to the playoffs. Oh, that was the, oh. the pass. The pass to uh, it was Demarius, Demarius Thomas. Yeah. Demarius Thomas. So, I, so I'm they, watching they it. They I'm, I'm, we're, we're having the Heisman year. I think I, th I think this is the same year, but we're we're having the Heisman year. I'm watching the Broncos, and they're not that great. And then Tebow comes in, and uh, that year, and he just leads him to all that. So, like, kind of crushed my dreams. But then I got, I you know. I thought I got blessed with, with uh, you know, something, a blessing in disguise because I ended up getting the head coach for the Broncos team that I was my favorite team, Mike Shanahan. So Mike is the coach in Washington, and I'm like, this is a dream come true. I get to play for the coach of the, my former favorite team and, and play in an offense that John Elway played in. Like, this is awesome. So that was my team growing up, but uh, I don't have a team anymore. You know what I mean? My teams are the, the Ravens, uh, Washington, and sometimes Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> The Denver. How was your time at? How was your time at? I mean, we, at every spot. Yeah. Let's get into it. No, seriously. Um, I'm so thankful for my three years in Baltimore, because those years in Baltimore showed me what it's supposed to be like in the NFL. And I had two bad experiences with Washington and Cleveland, which I don't think anyone would disagree are two of the more dysfunctional or most dysfunctional franchises in the NFL. So the way they did things, um, it just wasn't, it wasn't about team. It wasn't about bonding in that way. So when I came to Baltimore, the first thing I see on the damn, you know, is the team, the team, the team. And I'm like, we all know, like, that's, it's always about the team, but it's everywhere in the building, everywhere. And the other thing was play like a Raven. So I called Ray Lewis, talked to Terrell Suggs, and I'm like, what does it, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean to play like a Raven? And they, they broke that down for me, um, you know, obviously relentless effort, willing to, to do anything to, to get the victory, uh, having each other's back. And, and that was something that I noticed. I've never heard Harbs go to a press conference and trash a player. I, I haven't. Now, those are my only three years there and, and since I've been gone. Now, he'll say some shit in the meeting, right? He'll talk to us and, like, hold everybody accountable in the well, meeting. He's going to get real. And he's going to get real with yeah. you. He doesn't shy away from that. But to the public, oh, no. It's us versus the world. And when I was in Washington and in Cleveland, it was just wasn't that. So I was thankful for that opportunity to know that it's not everywhere in the league that things are going on the way that they're going there. Um, but whether it's protecting the players uh, in the media, coaches having each other's back, the players having each other's back, that camaraderie, uh, Baltimore really showed me how it's supposed to be done. And listen, I won how many division teams? So obviously rookie year, we won the division in Washington. Uh, and that was, I was a starting quarterback. But as a part of a team, I believe I, I was a part of four championship teams, two with the Ravens. Uh, I think we won, what, 18, 19? Yeah, we went back to back. One. We went back to back. It was 18, 19, or 19, 20, I can't remember. But we went back to back. And then I won uh, two in Washington, my rookie year. And then in 2015, when I didn't play a snap, Kirk Cousins led us to division yeah. title. That 2015 team was the most dysfunctional team I've ever been on in my life. Really, unbelievable. The, the most dysfunctional team I've ever been in my life. Uh, you you will, you will, you will not believe some of the stories that were going on on that team. But we won the division. 2012 team, not dysfunctional at all. To the public eye, yeah. you know what I mean. Like yeah. even for me, I was blinded. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know that the owner and the head coach were beefing, and that there was all these things going on in the organization. But winning cures everything. Winning cures and, everything. And I feel like in Baltimore, whether we were winning or losing, it was still going to be the same culture. It was still going to be the same approach. Harvest was under fire a little bit in 2018 when Joe went down, and that. like we were struggling a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
he didn't go to the press a presser and be like, nah, it's the players. Nah, it's this guy, it's that guy. He made sure he stayed the same the same way. So those experiences uh, weren't the best experiences, but they've helped me in this part of my life uh, be a better player, be a better teammate, and in the media game, just knowing how how to approach it the right way. What do you think was probably the turning, like the the one, when you think about your time in Washington, what was probably like the one thing that was kind of like the turning point of like, I don't think I'm going to be here for, because obviously everyone like, to anyone that, when you go to a place. Yep. I'm retiring here. I'm retiring here. <laughs> <laughs> this is home. Like, I'll never leave here. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Yes. yes. Like Grant Williams bought a house in Dallas because he signed there this summer and he already got traded and he's got to sell the house. But oh like, gosh. that's probably the mentality, right? Yeah. And, but the, the yeah, I would say the, the difference point, between yeah. the two of NBA and NFL though is like, NFL for the most part, like you shouldn't like you know, shouldn't buy a house until you like make the team or you sign a deal. Agreed. Um, Agreed. And then it's a second. It's a second deal, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, second deal. It's the second deal, I would say, for for most NFL guys out there. Like, don't you should literally never get comfortable with the league. <laughs> <laughs> like, you really shouldn't though. Like, like ever <laughs> until you sign like a second deal, and then and we're and we're not talking like second deal. Yeah, like it's, small money. Yeah, we're talking like once team. you sign the big second deal. That's when you should like, all right, now I'm gonna set my roots. Yeah. Other than that, like I tell everybody to go to Texas, Florida, come to Vegas or whatever. Go somewhere where there's no state income tax so you can save some of your money. Yeah. Uh that's uh, you know, we'll give a, that game out a little bit later. That's not the point of the show. Um, but turning point. The turning point. It's very simple. And it's it was a turning point for multiple reasons. It was the injury in the playoff game against Seattle. And it was a turning point career-wise because the next year I should not have played. I shouldn't have played in 2013 because I didn't just tear my ACL. So I had tore my ACL in 2009, came back in 2010 in college and played a full year, injury-free. Then we won the Heisman in 2011. So I had already had experience coming back from a knee injury. I know what it was like. But I tore my LCL, which is that ligament right on the outside here of your knee. And I still can't feel this. Like this right here, I might as well just you know not have a hand. I can't All feel day. that, really? right? So that part of the injury made it so much more difficult in the recovery. And if I had taken a full year off, I would have been myself again. And I wouldn't have had to, I wouldn't have had injuries that now were piling up because of compensation, right? So because of that, just physically, I wasn't really myself until I got back to Baltimore. <laughs> so you were running fast, wow. and I was, I was in 2018. I mean, I, I that that's a whole other story. But I, I was the fastest I've been. I was playing my ass off. Well, I didn't, you, I didn't, uh, I didn't get a lot of reps in practice. And highest they start catapult. No, I be because I be keeping up with the catapult. Yeah. Was, I, I feel like every time you say you you can still run fast, people are like, no, nah, you can't. no, you nah. can't. I'm like. I know for a fact, like, <laughs> Sam ain't been a lot. Uh, no, nah, he was right. not lying. So, so that's your Joe gets hurt when you're starting to feel back to yourself? Yes. Okay. So, so, so that's another story. So um, the Ravens are what? Like five and six at that point, right? Didn't uh, you go win I think we might have been one? six and six, and, okay. then we, and then we won five straight with Lamar. So do you think that there was a chance that if they were, let's say, Eight and four, clearly gonna. Because I feel like when Joe got hurt, the playoffs weren't really in the picture. No, so they no. were like, all right, let's play the rookie. <clears throat> but yes. if you felt that way, like physically, was there a chance you were gonna get, like, be the veteran that came in and were the quarterback? Well, that's why I was there. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. what they they brought me in to to be the veteran in case something happened to Joe. Right. Um, but also to be there to be a mentor for Lamar. Yeah. And I mean, I took my job seriously. Yeah. Listen, like me and Marlo, we both know this. Lamar's his own man. He doesn't want anyone to big brother him. Um, and I didn't try to big brother him. I just challenged him every day. That was my approach. And do I do I think that some of that was missing over the past couple of years since I've been gone? Yes. Because when when now Lamar's the oldest guy in the room, uh, it you know. It's way different. It's different. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to describe that, but I challenged Lamar every single day. We're gonna we're gonna go work. Yeah. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna laugh. We're gonna go, but we're gonna go work and we're gonna be professional. Um, but yeah, to say if we had a better record in that situation, yeah, for sure. That's that's what Harbs had talked to me right. about. I think the situation dictated the decision. Right. And Lamar was the first round pick for the Baltimore Ravens. He's the future. If if the playoffs aren't really there, like you remember that year, no, twenty eight. I I, re I remember the exact day when 
I don't know what we were, our record was, but I remember Harbs literally got in front of the team and yeah. was basically like, it, he addressed the him getting fired rumors. Mm -hmm. Like slightly, <clears throat> he did. Like yes, I'm telling you, it was it was real. Like yeah, yeah he, he was like it was he a was, real thing that yeah. he might get fired. Yeah, and yeah. I guess like I don't know if he wanted to like let us know that he hadn't been told that. I don't know what was out there in the media. Correct. He basically was. Like, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was like fired up. Like like I haven't been told. He's. I think he might have said that I haven't been told anything. I haven't been told anything. And then he was like, <laughs> and that's when he put down like. If I'm going to get fired, I'm getting fired with this dude, period. Exactly. Don't question exactly. him. Because, you know, Joe, you think, and this is when he basically said, even when Joe comes back, he's not getting the starting Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And we were just in the meeting like. It was, like, yeah. We, we were like, we didn't question. It wasn't a tense meeting, but it was like, it caught us a little yeah, off we, guard. Yeah, it was just kind of so random. so why did he make that stance? Um, did he think it would buy him time because he played the. the no, no I, uh, I think, no. I think he more so wanted to. To any whispers that might, because you like, I've never been to the Ravens and whispers got out. Yeah, yeah. But as you know, RG spoke, like, eventually you can, how a lot of things get leaked, and it's sometimes it's actually innocently. Your agent calls you, you say, like, yo, this is going on here, and then that gets, okay. it's just so many ways. That, that's it true. It was basically that's true. like a, okay. If you gonna say something, this is what's happening. This is what we, he wanted everyone. It seemed like he wanted everyone oh, to be I see. aware okay. of what was finna transpire Correct. the next couple. Because obviously, when you decide when Joe comes back, it's gonna be oh, they're not gonna give. When is Joe? And he basically he cut that out. He yeah. cut all that out. Made everybody on the same page. Yep. So and I remember talking with one of the guys uh, in the sauna, and we're just like, bro, like, <laughs> what's gonna happen like next? Like, cause we we kind of did think he was gonna probably yeah. get fired. We're like, bro, what, what's it gonna be like? Like, yep. he's gonna be gone. Like, what's, what's yep. this? And then we just like didn't lose a game again. I think mm -hmm. with, with with Lamar at the helm. Yeah. Um. So it's like to his point to, you know, it it dictated it. It was that really was like the. That, it was like, ah, uh, well, we could, but it's like yes, we're going out like this. Yeah. When I to your point, if we were eight and four, yeah, and we were at playoffs right there, and there was no murmurings about Harbaugh's job, I would have been the starting quarterback. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because I I didn't dress. You remember I didn't dress when when Joe was starting. I didn't dress. Lamar right. dressed. Right. And they and they put Lamar in and little gadget stuff yeah. to, to 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 go out there and get some some playing experience. But when I made the team, uh, I was talking about the preseason. I didn't I didn't practice in the preseason. I barely got to practice, like two reps a day. And I started three games in the preseason. And they were, I don't know if they were like testing me, but you yeah. know how it goes. Like if you don't get reps and you play and you play bad, you're not going to be there. So I had to play well. And the Miami game was like our third or fourth playoff game or uh, preseason game. And I didn't get one practice rep the whole week. And they came to me the day before and said, hey, you're starting. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> well, good. I, I was prepared for that. Um, so when I made the team, coach told me, Hands down, listen. Something happens to Joe, you're the starter. Wow. And and I was fine with that, but because the situation was what it was, and we were on the fringe of of not even being a playoff contender, and because he was possibly going to get fired, uh, he made that decision. And if, I don't know, you don't maybe you don't know this because you're on the defense side, but we changed our whole offense that week because when Joe got hurt, we had the bye week. So we come into the bye week and we spent the entire you know, by week and the next week, putting in an entire new system yeah. to be a quarterback driven run system, zone read based with with uh Giro. So Marty Morningwig was actually Morning you remember Marty? Wig. Marty Morningwig was actually our offensive coordinator. But after the bye week and when Joe went down and they made the switch to Lamar, Greg Roman yeah. was our offensive coordinator. Now not by title. And Marty still called the plays. But everything was based off what Giro had done with yeah, Colin Kaepernick. Right. So once I saw that shift, I was actually, you know, I was pretty pleased because, like, that's that's what I do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I knew that, like, they're moving forward to the future. And I don't think Harv's made the decision to buy himself time. I think yeah. I agree with you, Marlo. He made the decision because he's like, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging. And we yeah. believe in this kid. And we know that he can get it done. And we believe he can be a star. And he proved him right. We're going to pause briefly to shout out our sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the number one ticketing platform for all your top events, whether it's going to games, concerts, and for you, we have a special deal. If you're a first-time customer on SeatGeek, use the code PUNCHLINE, one word, 
punch line for $20 off your first order. I'm going to be hitting NCAA March Madness games, MLB all summer, and then when football is back in the fall. So use the code punchline. You'll get $20 off your first order. You can also check out the app where in the app they'll show you are you getting a good deal or a bad deal? So as NFL free agency is picking up, you'll know if you're scoring the best tickets the way that the top GMs are scoring the top free agents. So use the code punchline on SeatGeek. Now back to the action. It just caught us off guard. I, <laughs> he, he came in hot. And we was all like, cool. Like we didn't really get like, like cool. Like, like appreciate the honesty that, yeah, that I, he knows and he feels it. Yeah, yeah, he just was like, hey, look. We going out swinging. We going out with this, and we're all like, "All right, cool." Like, let's, 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 let's none of it. us had anticipated it. Like, <laughs> yeah, because I was only that was my first year there in Baltimore. So I know you. What, what year was that for you? That was year two for me. Because that was his. Was that his rookie? Was that Lamar's? It was rookie? Lamar's yeah, rookie Lamar's year. year. Yes, yeah, so that was year two. Yeah. So like, all the other guys that were there, I think T. Sizzle was still there at that yeah. time. They're used to the way the Ravens r run things, and like, we don't. Like, Harbs will come in and, like, put some bulletin board material up there. But he doesn't really address, like, those types of rumors. So, yeah, yeah, like, when it was going on, it was so loud. Yeah. It had impacted, you know, yeah. him in a way that yeah. I think caught everyone else off guard because it never really got to him in that way. But, I mean, I'm glad it did, you know, because yeah. Lamar I doing what he did was incredible. I, yeah. I remember I, I, I thought there might be a – I remember I thought there might be a chance that – um he might have thought that he might get fired because I was. It just surprised me when he gave us like the entire bye week off. He gave us a lot of the. He gave us more of the bye week off than yeah he than did. the year before. He did that was for sure. <laughs> like we're usually like we were like a you know we gonna practice till about Thursday. Y'all get out Thursday. Y'all get like you know extra kicked everybody. And I was I was kind of like wow like that was that was interesting. He gave yeah. us a lot of he gave us a lot of time off, and then that like. That's what I'm saying. It was, it was. I guess looking back at it now, it was kind of like y'all get y'all's rest. When we come back, <laughs> we going out swinging, and that was kind of, that was kind of how it was. And we, and we literally, I mean, we we went on a run with Lamar, and then the, you know, obviously Lamar's gotten so much better, but the Chargers yeah. did. Was that the year the Chargers? That was yeah. the that Chargers was year. Like yeah. all those DBs out there, yeah. and uh, yeah. and we had played the Chargers uh, at the end of the year yeah. and beat them. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. So they kind of came back and had an opportunity. Yeah, but good, nah, good I, I agree with you, Marlo. Like. I've never seen a team do what we did with Lamar that year yeah. during the bye week because we didn't run a we didn't run a we had some zone read but we didn't run a ton of zone read in the offseason. It, it was it was West Coast, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Joe Flacco's not doing all that. So yeah. it was true West Coast offense and we changed it just like that. Yeah, it was crazy. it was crazy and it worked. Yeah. And Lamar was phenomenal and he's, you know, obviously two-time MVP. Who's, who's I got in trouble because I when I was home the other week, they were playing the Chiefs game. That was his rookie year, right? In Arrowhead. Ooh, I think that might have been was the next that his year. year two? I think that was year 2. And I was like the offense that they used to have Lamar in, like he did not look like a good football player. Like he was obviously amazing, he won games, he racked up stats. But, like, what he does nowadays, it's insane. Did he grow. change his throwing motion? I think so. He, he had used to look kind of funny. It looked when he ugly. <laughs> he used to Come on, give us. I, I said it. Did he change it? You said he looked ugly. I, 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 I did not say that. I, feel like no, he, I said that, but he's smiling. So I he, was smiling because we, we brought in. Yeah. Um, that uh, random dude in black. Oh, he's, what? he's not dude, random. Who, His name Adam, is Adam Dado. Dude, that dude used to just blend in <laughs> in the such. To the, I, to he the, would so, throw on the Ravens gear dude, and everything. He'd throw on the Ravens. He'd be like this. Well, we're like, I used to be like, dude, who is that dude? Like, it's like some days I see him, some days I don't. He, yep. I, when I do see him, it's like I barely see him. It's like he's just in the shadows. Yeah, so he is what I call, he is the Shakira for quarterbacks. All right, Shakira, is, I believe she has a song that says the hips don't lie. Yeah. Right. So he's always a, he's about activating the hips for the quarterback. So Lamar, his rookie year and and really 2019 is uh, as well uh, early on in the offseason. He just wasn't he wasn't getting everything he needed to into each throw. Um, and from the quarterback spot, it always starts with the feet. You know, it's ground up. So they started working with Lamar on the ground up so where, that he would be more consistent because that's all it is. If, if you go run a fast 100, you're not going to be able to repeat that 100-meter dash every single time if you're not technically sound. 
So they brought in the specialist to help Lamar become more technically sound, and you've seen the change. It's crazy. So now you see him, like, when you watch him now, go watch a couple of clips. Watch how he gets his hip through yeah. on throws, no matter what now. And it's a small change that he didn't change his throwing motion. He just crisped up his, his process, and now he's just so much more fluid. But I've been so impressed with Lamar, more so from a standpoint of managing the game. Yeah. You know, this whole discussion about game game manager versus game changer, it's not like our guy Cam, I got a lot of love for Cam. He's not the first guy that's ever said that. Mm -hmm. It's been a conversation for 20, 30 years now. Um, it's just coming back around. But Lamar this year, I felt like he managed the game so much better than I've ever seen him manage it. Not always, not he. Not that he was always trying to make the crazy play, but you know, being okay taking the check down, being okay running out of bounds, running and getting down and, and protecting himself. Yeah. And when you got a you know number one defense on the other side, like it's Dang easy hurt, to do yeah. that. You guys were absolutely incredible. What What do you think was the the difference? Because this is the best defense the Ravens have had in. Man, I mean, it, it feels like since, since it was since. just beautiful to see. Like I know we. We it's crazy. We talked to uh, we talked to DJ, and he was talking about how the the Jaguars that 2018 team they were arguing over. No, maybe 2017 team. Yeah, they were arguing over is the secondary good or is the D line good. That's, that's okay. That's making okay. Okay. Like they were actually arguing, which is like a crazy like the players were like <laughs> internally legit, internally were fighting. Like we're fighting over like nah, but we good. Y'all getting sacks? So we covered. That was and the so, Blake Bortles year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so the craziest thing about this year, man, it, you always preach that in the defensive rooms, like rushing coverage, working together. Mike's like, we're we going to call calls just for the rush. We're going to call. Mike just had us knowing exactly kind of how the game was going to be called. Right. And it was just crazy to see, like, rush and coverage work together so well. Okay. Like, I get beat. Matt B could get me a sack. I'm like, woo hoo <laughs> 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 We're over there covering, scrambling. I, I mean, it. we're plastering, and then the matter beat get a get a sack. Another off. sack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> off the, the, he did, it took him a while to get that sack. It might right, take a second right. sack, but <laughs> it was just like a, a beautiful, and then uh, just such a big role of selflessness. I know mm. plenty of guys on the D line. You know, they always rotate. Yep. No pass like. Every pass rusher really wants to be like Max Crosby, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to come out the game, bro. I, I don't know how else to tell you, but I know a lot of guys were, they wanted to play more and they didn't get, but they didn't really let that get, they didn't really ever let that blow up. They tried to keep right. it cool. I mean, even, even on offense, like you look at the craziest thing I always like noticed, and I only say this because Odell just said a tweet about it. He was really never in the game. Like he played so little of, Every, it'd be weird. Talking about OBJ? OBJ. Yeah, I'd be, yeah, yeah, I'd be yeah, on yeah. defense, and I'm like, Odell, I'm like, Odell, why are we talking to each other right now? Like, why, why aren't you on the field? Why aren't you on the field? <laughs> so it just was a lot of people wanting more playing time. Um, just that was the offensive spot, but which yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But just went from a whole team perspective of people just really being selfless. And if you can really get your team to do that, you can really go a long way, especially on the on the defensive side. Um, I know offense is harder to manage those. A lot more emotional guys, the divas, divas. The divas. But, what, you you, know, they're, what do you mean? We, <laughs> we have we have those same you know roles on on defense as well. Yeah. And I also think something that really made our defense really elite was the ability to move Kyle Hamilton around all over the field. Yeah, exactly. Um, he is like I mean I'm not saying he's made our whole defense, but when you got a piece <laughs> like that, when you can have him. Yep. Rushing, you can have him covering like his ability to be a six three safety and cover Keenan Allen in the slot. Right, is actually like it's really not being done. Right, like, I see him like <laughs> manning up these guys, and I'm like, dang, that's that's yep. wild. And so whether he's covering, whether he's in zone, whether he's back at safety, he was able to have our defense just kind of. You never know where this guy's going to be. You never know what we're doing. It's yep. hard to tell. He can do everything. You got a lot of teams that they're nickel. Yeah, can't really cover, or That's they can't very, really this, blitz, or they they're, they're one or the threat. other. They're a cover nickel, or they're a, they're a, a run game nickel. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're one or the other. And so when you can have, and most nickels are usually smaller. This dude's six three. It's very true. Very He's true. six three. Like, yeah. and when you try to run to him, like so many screens that get thrown. Yeah, he was blowing them up. It's like, boom! You're way back in the backfield, and it's a TFL. Right. Which, as often, you know, those screens can get you. Yeah. Give a six here. 
give us like now we're ahead of the sticks. Just put you in exactly put and you ahead so of the sticks. It, it was uh just just a lot, but I mean, I'll, I'll give you my uh my I agree with all of that hundred percent. My take on why you guys are so dominant, um, defensive line wise. Now this is just my perspective, having been there in Baltimore, knowing Wink's system, knowing that Mike comes from that system and how they approach it. So on the defensive line, or should I say sacks wise, I think you guys had three guys that had, uh, was it over 10 sacks or over nine nine sacks, but then you had like six guys or seven guys that had at least three. And I've always felt like in Baltimore since Sizz left, there was never like that one guy. Now Z, like Zedarius and and Judon, great rushers, but they went other places to get their sacks, Yeah, Yeah, right? Because the system is built for everyone to be able to blitz yeah. and for everyone to be able to eat, you don't need that one just dominant pass rusher, but it makes it so much harder for a quarterback <laughs> and an offense to operate. And I told this story about how um, uh, Levine, uh, we're, we're in the game, and coach throws up, you know, clips, the great clips, we won the game. So he throws the great clips up in the team meeting, yeah, the and, he's, and he's talking about the them – in the blitz, and Veen was supposed to blitz. But at the last second, I think it might have been uh, CJ. Veen and CJ made a decision that CJ was going to blitz and not Veen on the fly. And Harbaugh was like, well, Wink didn't tell you guys to do that. But on in that moment, you guys knew that if CJ blitzed, he was going to be the free runner and not Veen. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, I wish an offensive coach would give me like that kind of <laughs> latitude to like make those types of decisions on the field. And I think that's what makes you guys so great is it's the ability for multiple guys to rush. It's the autonomy on the field to make decisions, also living and dying by those decisions, but having the coaches trust in you to get that done. And then I think the last thing that we haven't talked about is just the fact that Roquan, uh, Roquan, I tweeted this out. He's he's like he's a little off, but in a good way, right? The like the yeah. dude was built by God nah, when, to play football. Now nah, when the when the game starts, like he's a that's like my guy. He's super chill. He off, is off the, off the 100%. field, hundred percent. But when he gets on the field, he just turns into <laughs> like just this crazy, insane, just dude. I'd be like. I tell him, I'm like, bro, hey, just lead us, bro. Like, just, hey, <laughs> I ain't going to say much to you. You all don't need no pep talk. But that dude, I mean, he made an instant difference when he came to our, when he got traded. It was like, it was just like night and day. He just, you plugged him in and he like truly makes everyone around him better. I mean, it's. No, nah, he's a great, great dude. I haven't been around him as a teammate, but I've heard all you guys talk about him. Some of his quotes after the game. I'm like, yo, this dude is scary. Like, you want him. He says some, he's like, the guy you want at the club with you because you know he's going to be cool, calm, and collected. But if some shit goes down, like, he's throwing punches. He's ready to go. <laughs> and I just, when I watch him play, and I, I you know, I watch all the tape. I watch all the cut-ups. And I, and I see some of the clips on social media of just him and, like, his approach to playing the game. And I'm like, that's what you want from your middle linebacker. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about NFL honors. Okay. How do we feel? I mean, how do we feel about the awards? <sighs> did, did I, knew, you I knew you were going to go did there. You ever vote? I did. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's start okay. with this one. Lamar gets 49 of 50. Not unanimous. Who the hell is the other vote for? Josh Allen. I was surprised it was Who, Josh but who's Allen. Vote, but who's, listen, I know love the guy Josh right. Allen. Not just stats wise, but eye test wise. Josh Allen is an absolute yeah. beast. And anyone who tells you he's not a great quarterback is just trying to pump themselves up. He's a great quarterback. Now, can you compare them to Patrick Mahomes? No, nobody compared to Patrick Mahomes right now. But I, Lamar should have been unanimous MVP, 100%. I got another question before we get back to that about okay. the votes. Yep. So you, you just, they give you, you do a first place vote. Wait, I'm I'm a little confused how the first place votes, second place. Like, so yeah, so how does the vote system? Tell you us about rank the vote it, system. Yeah. Okay, so for NFL honors, let, let me clarify. For NFL honors and those awards, I did not have a vote. Okay, right, but we do we do our own voting system at ESPN, and we oh. were able to vote for the awards oh, in, that, in that regard. Like right, okay, right. Okay. So, I don't know how they tier it, but <clears throat> you know, I think there's only been, I could be wrong, but there's only two unanimous MVPs yeah. ever. Was it Brady and and Lamar? Mm-hmm. He should have been two time. Like, uh, and it, and if it wasn't, then there should have been more votes for other guys. Because Josh Allen's season and how they played, 
Yeah, there's there's a, like Christian McCaffrey should have got a vote then. Right. You know what I mean? Like he led the league in rushing and look at where the 49ers are. Like Brock Purdy should have got a vote. Yeah. You know, so that if it's 49 out of 50, <laughs> like come on, who is that one person? Please tell me who that is so we can go fire them up. Um, but I no, know the person. I'll show you after. Offensive player of the year. He yeah. Yeah, okay. OP you know. uh was was McCaffrey, right? Yeah. Did you not think Tyreek could have got in there? Or did his fire kind of burn off a little bit? I, I mean, Tyreek literally I, told us his fire died. If Tyreek <laughs> if, if had finished the year stronger. Yeah. He would have been in there, yeah. And I don't mean in the sense of, like, had more yards. Take his yards. Yeah. Disperse them differently throughout the season. And he hits a and couple he, of those games at yeah. the end. Yeah. He's the offensive player of the it's year. It's crazy. He played so good early, it actually hurt him in the long exactly. run. Exactly. Like, he was just like, yeah. Yeah. He was, the, like, he was ah, the, the best ever. Hey, he was my MVP. Like, yeah. for half the season, I'm like, this dude's incredible. Yeah. So I still think that his season was worthy of getting offensive player of the year. But when you when you look at the, the, way, the way that it all played out, people have recency bias, yeah. and they'll never admit it, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Defensive player of the year. A little, a little topic there yeah. with TJ Watt tweeting. I didn't see the tweet. You didn't see the tweet. I did not. He what tweeted happened? before it was announced. Before, the, uh, before it was announced. Seems like he knew that he wasn't winning the award. He said, tweeted before it was announced, and he skipped the show. And he skipped the show. I'm, well, I'll give you a little secret about that. The, the guys know. If they're, they, they know. Right. Do yeah. they? Tyreek said yeah. he did. Oh, the winner knows. The winner, the winner knows. Okay, the winner So knows. if you don't know, then you should probably also know. Listen, like T, I don't know who TJ is represented by, yeah. and I don't think I'm giving away any you know, you know know trade secrets here, <laughs> but- the agencies will know at some point. I don't know how soon before, so they but know. certain guys, like there's very few guys that don't show up for an award that they're going to win. So I don't know what TJ said. What did he say? He said nothing. I'm not nothing. I'm not used to. Yeah, um, something like that. Being like un being underappreciated. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know. I, I'll be honest with you. I thought that Deron Bland should have won. Defensive player of the year. And here, and here's, and, here and, and here's my yeah. reason. It's so much harder. How many? Do you have so six picks? Harder. Yeah, it's six. It's, it's, it's so, NFL record. Yeah. yeah, it's so yeah, it's so much harder to, to get six pick sixes in a season than it is to get 17 sacks. And I don't know how many sacks uh, yeah. Miles had or whatever, but um, Miles Garrett is a force. He is a dominant a player in this league. He's a He is the reason, in my opinion, that the Browns – played the way that they did and that Joe Flacco could go out. Guy, we, we love and respect, right? Joe could go out and and basically play the same way that Marshawn Lynch had the little video about I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get mine more than I get got. <laughs> Flacco went out there and he was throwing interceptions, but he just he just threw like maybe three or four more, more touchdowns. Yeah. He was going out there balling. But he was able to do that because of that defense with Miles Garrett. So no shade towards Miles. Uh, TJ had better numbers and that whole – situation in Pittsburgh and how they were in the position that they were in yeah. was unbelievable and because of TJ Watt. So I could see why he would be upset, but I don't think either of them had a better season than Deron Bland. It's so hard to pull that off. He has more pick sixes in one year than hall of famers have in their entire careers. That, that to me is, he should have been defense player. Of the like year. if a, if a pass rusher set the NFL record for sacks in a season, he's the defensive player of the year, not even no one else is getting a vote. And he set the NFL record for pick sixes. And this isn't some, like, made-up stat, you know? <laughs> They're like, oh, well, he had three interceptions and in the end of the game yeah, when they yeah. were down by three, and it's the most in NFL history. Like, no, this is, like, a bona fide, he caught that many Crazy. pick sixes, and he should have been the defensive player yeah. of the year. I talked to him about it at the Pro Bowl. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't say he didn't think he was going to win, yeah. but, you know. It's just tough. Cornerbacks aren't, they're not showing you guys any love. Like, that's a legendary season that I don't think will ever happen again. Yeah, I don't I think it'll ever happen right. again. Um, what else is there? This is the one I'm most passionate about. I know. I already know where you're going. Oh, yeah. I saw it. But Come, go ahead. Comeback player of the year. So, what did, did you guys vote on that for ESPN? Did you yes. discuss that? Yes. And what was your? I voted pick? for DeMar Hamlin. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's your, tell yeah. me your take and you give me yours and I'll give you mine. I mean, I was at the game in Cincy. Okay. So maybe I'm a little more personal to it, but he, the fact that he played football this year, I thought was just, he should be the comeback player of the year. Like, I know when Alex won the award, did you win the award? I did not win the, you award. Didn't win the award. I did not win the award because we, when I came back, we went uh, four and 12. <laughs> so. Right. But yeah, I, I just, I was, I was under the belief that the fact that he got on the field 
was incredible. Yeah. Um, and that's who I would have voted for. Now, I, I do understand, for those who don't know, he didn't win the award because the people who voted him put him first. And the people who didn't vote didn't him, put him on the ballot. didn't even put him on the ballot. So gotcha. Joe only had more second and third place votes. Gotcha. But he actually got more points. Gotcha. Like, could happen in the Heisman voting, theoretically. Um, yeah, what was your take on what happened? I, I think um, he did die and then come back, which is just kind of insane. But I guess he didn't, because they're saying he didn't perform, it. perform yeah. as much. But, dude, right? I just feel like there's a ton of people... Like, even my thinking about myself, if I died on the field, I don't know if I would be, like, training camp, where you at? I really don't know. I'm just going to be completely honest. I love the game of football. It's great. But even my mama might be like, hey, son, look, God, don't, you know what I'm saying? Look, I'm just saying. Yep. So to, to I mean, you got to even just think about, like, going and hitting somebody ever again. Like, what happened, the way it happened was just, it was such an ordinary thing. Like, yeah. He did, did. I know there's probably a lot of fears. I hopefully he's over those fears. I don't. Yeah. I know it's it's it is wild, but I I can understand if you go off the fact like he didn't, yeah, play that much. I guess or didn't make as many plays as Joe, but then he came off the couch. Right. But I don't know. It, it seems kind of, uh, it it's kind of wild. Yeah, you're you're a very brave man for for even going there. I'm you know. Trying. No, you're a brave guy. And like I said, you've been phenomenal on, on the field and you're outspoken off of it. And like, <clears throat> I think what you just said is the sentiment of a lot of people. When you look at the award in totality, they say, okay, what, but what is that? Some people have said he didn't play or he didn't play a lot or he didn't, you know, play to an effective level that you yeah. would be like, all right, that guy's a comeback player of the year. Um, but who won comeback player of the year last year? I would use my phone, but Wi-Fi is terrible. Here, so. <laughs> oh, I thought you were because asking. You knew that is actually it. comeback player of the year the year before. It has been performance based historically. There's no doubt about that. But like when Alex won, it was a lot of story based. Yes. But all right, how about this? Why wasn't Lamar Jackson the comeback player of the year? He, oh, because he was injured. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was missed, injured. He's, he he's an injured the last, last year. Six games. He, he, Tua. All right, Tua so. the year before. Tua won comeback player of the year year four. Now, what did Tua come back from? Cushions, right? Nope. No, it was just an injury, right? What, what did Tua come back from? Uh, <laughs> Listen. What, do my, you know? The, the, <laughs> no, I'm saying, Tua's concussions were last year. Right. Yeah. He, that would have been for this year. Exactly. Yeah. That would have been for this year. So yeah. what did Tua come back from? I, I'm blanking on it right now. Yeah. But you were also all blank, blanking on it. So the yeah. question is... I listen. I, I I was teammates with Joe. I got a lot of respect for Joe. I do think that Joe had one of the most incredible playoff runs in league history when the ran, when the Ravens won the Super Bowl. Yeah. What did Joe Flacco come back from? Right, like not getting signed or having to be oh, or having to be on the what Jets. Did he? That's so. Oh, so listen. No, 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 I so, see what he's so saying. So so my yeah, point. Yeah, my really my whole point back. is, what did he? What did he come back from to right. warrant that award? I, I, I could be wrong. Maybe Tua hurt an ankle or had yeah. a, uh, an injury, and that was more relatable to why he won Comeback Player of the Year. And I think oh, that is I think that is probably what happened. Yeah. But with Joe, we have like these Something's stories. <laughs> stories are great, yeah. and Joe's story coming off the couch is incredible. And I kind of joked about it. I wasn't joking. I wanted the Browns to sign me. <laughs> um, I had said that they should sign me because you know you can help the young guy. Uh, obviously, I was ready to play and training and, and being ready to play. Yeah. And when they signed Joe, I came out and I said, oh, they picked the Super Bowl MVP over me. And it's like, but that was a legit thing. Yeah. And I understand that when you have a guy like Joe who's been there and done that, the rest of the room immediately thinks, all right, we got a fighting chance. If they had signed Cam, they would have felt that way. If they had signed me, they would have felt that way. Yeah. But when you sign Joe, there's nothing wrong with that. But what did he come back from to warrant getting that award? I don't know what that is. And to me, for Demar, he died. The guy died on the field. Kind of crazy to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like for him to come back and, like you said, to play, like most people wouldn't even go try to touch a football <laughs> ever again. Football, but Demar Hamlin, in my opinion, has been such an inspiration, and I think because he got so much attention uh, and became an overnight 
celebrity where he's hanging out with, you know, the Kim Kardashians of the world and, yeah. and Michael Rubin and everyone else, there was a certain feeling that people kind of got jealous of that a little bit. He became bit. a villain. In, and, a, and, in the wildest way, and it's unbelievable that it that it yeah, turned out to be that way. When I think he should be, he yeah. should be an inspiration. Yeah. You know, the fact that he didn't say, "I'm just going to come back and play," but he was in the preseason, headhunting essentially, yeah. going out there like putting it all on the line. To me, that's an inspiration because most people would say, "You know what? I got hurt doing this, and I almost died. I don't want to see it. I don't want to be around it. I'm done with it." Demar said, "No, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to make this part of my story." And I think that uh, in itself, he didn't need to play. Yeah. This Demar yeah. Hamlin's the best story in the NFL over the past 24 months, and you and you and like you said, it almost feels like he's a villain now. Yeah. And that to me is just it's disheartening and it's sad. But I definitely thought he should have won yeah. Comeback Player of the Year because he died on he the got field and came back person to life. Of the year because he literally came back. He came back. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's only one other guy that I know that came back from from dying. Jesus Christ. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was over like, dang it, dang it, no. Like, he's, uh, he's, he's I'm said, who? I'm like, dang it. And, 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 like, and, like, and, and I am not saying yeah, DeMar Hamlin is Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm like, just saying it's like that. It's so rare. Yeah. And it's not a moment you want to celebrate, but you want to celebrate the fact that this guy yeah. got back out there and he's alive and he's playing the game that he loves again. Yeah. I think that was worthy of the award. Yeah. All right, last thing. You said Brown sign you. Yep. You stay ready. Mm-hmm. Like, you would play next year? Yeah, it's got to be the right situation. Yeah. Um, I know you guys were talking. <laughs> uh, my man Cam put out a manifesto of, like, who he would play for, who yeah. he won't play for. I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, I, I went to Baltimore and was the fourth, fifth quarterback and, and earned my keep to be there for three years and extend my career. Um, for me, it's got to be the right situation. Uh, young quarterback, I, w I really did enjoy my experience with Lamar. Yeah. Um, I didn't have that when I was in the league, when I first came in. A guy that had been through it, not only looked like me, but played like me and was able to guide me through some of those uh, uh, pitfalls. So I was able to do that for Lamar, and I enjoyed that. So if there's a young guy that's coming in or that's already there that they want me to come in and, and mentor and be the backup quarterback and be ready to play if need be, I'd do that. If it's a situation where it's a starting opportunity, I mean, who's going to turn that down, right? right? I've been out of the league for three years now. So it's not like people are going to be jumping uh, at the bit to, like, give me an opportunity to be a starter. I'm, I'm not a, uh, oblivious to that. Yeah. But I do believe, just like yeah, every play. other quarterback, that I can go out there and, and get it done at a high level and then have some fun. So you I don't been shy. To Charlotte? I don't, you ever I don't been to Charlotte? Uh, talking about with Bryce? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a Bryce, I'm a Bryce fan. I've been to Charlotte. I'd love to go be there and, yeah. and help, help Bryce Young do his thing. Um, I don't take credit for any of the stuff that Lamar Jackson has ever done. He's he's the one playing. He's the one making the throws. He's the one making the runs. Um, it was a joy for me to be a part a part of that process. But make no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If we go to a team, it's challenge every day because we're trying to play. We're trying to do what we can to, to become the best. And I think that's what makes the team better. You got to have competition in the room, even if it's not stated competition. So I encourage everybody out there not to shy away from saying the things that you want to do because you feel like somebody might laugh at you or they're going to be like, oh, that's that's just improbable. Listen, I'm 33. I'll be 34 in a couple days. I believe when I'm 39, there's still a chance. Let me, okay? ask, you, let me ask you this question to, to close us out here. Why do you think I, – I, this is a prime example this, this current year yep. of the backup quarterback. Yep. Why do you think so many teams would rather – Lose. Have, <laughs> have a. It's the truth. <laughs> yeah. It's the truth. Like, like have a a a backup quarterback that could work as mm -hmm. opposed to one that has work that might be older. Mm -hmm. That you know what I mean. Like, what? Yeah. Why do you think it's just the the? Would you say it's just the idea that if it does work, you can. Right, right. He's younger. I think it's a couple things. Um, I think one, and the and and I do actually believe this is the leading reason. If you bring in a guy like Cam Newton, Robert Griffin III, Colin Kaepernick, not that all of us are in the same category. Cam was an MVP, right? He went to the Super Bowl. I was Rookie of the Year. Um, Cap went to Super Bowls. But if you bring those guys in, Tim Tebow, right? A lot of attention. It's going to be a distraction uh, from the standpoint of 
Tebow goes to where was it the the Patriots, yeah. and they're holding press conferences for Tim Tebow, and he's like the fifteenth quarterback yeah. on the roster. You know what I mean? He goes to what was it Jacksonville, and he's playing tight end, and he's like the 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 seventy fifth tight end. But they're interviewing Tim Tebow, so I do believe that has some of the effect of why they don't want to bring those guys in because they want the attention to be on the starter and only on the starter and supporting the starter. So there's this convoluted thought that, oh, well, if we don't bring those guys in and we put someone who's not as talented or not as good, who's not going to give us a chance to win, but he's young, they're not going to talk about that guy. If our quarterback throws a pick and Cam Newton's the backup, they're clamoring for Cam to get in the game. And not only the fans, but the team might be because the team don't remember Cam Newton. <laughs> From New England. Right. They remember Cam Newton from the Carolina Panthers. They remember that. They remember Cam Newton from Auburn. So that psyche, I think, they overthink that. And they put themselves in situations to where when they do lose their starter, their season's over. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of that, I feel like, is just execs. They're trying to find that guy. Everybody's trying to find Brock Purdy. So if we can get Jake Browning with the Bengals, who played his ass off this year, right? If he can go out and he can help the Bengals do what they did, that scout, that exec now has a shiny badge of honor. Like, that's my guy. <laughs> well, you don't get that if you take the second pick in the draft or the first pick in the draft and he goes out and he becomes successful. You don't get that. So I think those, those things are weighing it out. And it's a deeper conversation, but I think it's wrong as hell. I think you should bring in the best guys for – for the talent that's out there, there's guys on the street that are more talented than the 64 quarterbacks that are in the NFL. And the quarterback play this year was atrocious. So people look at me and they're like, hey, well, why didn't you get signed? It's like, well, I had opportunities. I got calls. They just weren't the right situation. Mm. I'm not trying to go burn a year somewhere and, and lose the, I don't want to say the momentum, but like the fun that I'm having doing TV. It's got to be a, a bigger commitment. I'll go somewhere for three years. That's a that's a life changing commitment. I'm not gonna go somewhere for for two games or for three games. Um, so I do think it's wrong. I think they should sign guys like that and not have them on the street just because they think, oh man, he might be a threat to our starter. Well, if he's a threat to your starter, you got the wrong guy starting. Let's talk about let's let's. Did you say you started with track or you started with football? So I actually started with baseball. Baseball. Six years old. First sport I ever played was baseball. Now hindsight's twenty twenty. If I'd have known that, you know, these baseball players are playing to like 65 and have guaranteed money, I probably would have kept playing baseball. <laughs> um, but it started there. And uh, before we keep going, did you ever break that record? I broke one of your lesser records. Oh, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't your elite record. You <laughs> but to, you broke one of the records. I broke one of them that was not your, your, be, your best assist. Is that record still standing? I don't know what record he's referring to. So. He too is. many. He's got too many records. His 300 hurdles is, I'm pretty sure, top... <laughs> I don't. I have no idea what that time. record he's talking about. Hurdles. It's the hurdles time. Which yeah, one is it? The like one tens or the threes? Three hundred. Okay. Top fifteen of like all time ever wow. in high school history. Yeah. So I ran thirty five, thirty two in high school in the three hundred hurdles, uh, but I was the fastest seventeen year old in the world in the four hundred hurdles. Uh, I ran forty nine five at seventeen. So. Anyway, Dang, getting past that, I know my track number is way be, better than I know my football two. numbers. So that might be like that's probably. Top three all time. It's got to be. I think only Reggie, I forgot the guy, Reggie Wyatt? Yep, Reggie Wyatt. I think he's the only one. That yep. And I, when I broke it in high school, so I broke the, I I set the national record in the three and hurdles in high school, uh, 35, you know, 32. And then the next day, Jeshua Anderson from California broke it and ran 35, 31. Oh, wow. So it, cool. we only had that one for a day. But no, nah, bottom line is I started out with baseball and then basketball became my thing. Uh, still was my thing all the way through high school. But track, like when you talk about track, and this is why I always try to tell everybody, do as many sports as you possibly can. You know this. When you line up on the track, there no one's coming to save you. No one's coming to save right? you. Right? So like building your own confidence of knowing like, all right, I'm in lane one and I got to go against the rest of these guys and in lane two through nine. And when the gun sounds and I get to the last 100 and the 400 meters, we always talk about this in track. When you get to the last 100, you're going to see if somebody got a little cat in them. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll say cat because we're not going to use the other word on this on this platform. But, well, you'll find it because if they don't have that dog in them, in that last hundred, you'll see it. And yeah. they'll fade away. And I just thought for me and my life and how I grew up, track and field, I've always said this, you know, track and field is the only real sport. Everything else is just a game because it's not a game when you get out there on that track. It's not a game. I think track is the... 
there's so much <laughs> mental warfare to track and field. It's like, even if you're like, I mean, some people are just the best from the day one they step on the track. Very true. They can eat Skittles before the race yeah, and go run people, all time, time. But oh, it's, 100%. it's, it's yeah. when you're like, when you're good, but you're not the best and you're like, okay, I know I can beat the guy in one, two, three, <laughs> right. four, I mean, eight, you know, seven, six, but this guy next to me right. runs two seconds faster than me. And you got to try to run, still perform at your your best, knowing that it's it's only the only way you can even beat this guy is if you run your absolute best. One hundred percent. And so, it's not that I mean I didn't really see it as pressure, but I mean I've I've been on so many teams and so many times people have just choked in the <laughs> in their events. Is that they, really what happens? Dude, no, it's track. It's, a, it's is a real true, thing, man. The pressure that that comes. I was telling somebody this story. We were in the. Um, State, state final. And it came down to whoever won the 4 by 4 was going to win the state meet. And I, we had, like, maybe... I wasn't even on the 4 by 4 But I had, like, one event. I don't know why I wasn't on the 4 by 4 But it came down to it, and my coach comes up to me, and I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll run the 4 by 4 Because I already knew he was going to ask me to <laughs> run the 4 by 4 So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll run it. Like, no big deal. And I just remember warming up. All three guys were just looking at me like... like you know you gotta like win this for us. So <laughs> right. I'm like, yo, I, I I think we should we should be able to win. And first guy goes, second guy goes, third guy goes, and he just, I guess he was like, I'm gonna win this for us. It was indoor track. This dude has to run the fastest 200 I've ever seen. Oh no! I tell him to slow down oh, as no. he's coming by, and he's just, I'm like, oh, I'm. Everyone's like, oh, he's killing. It. I'm like, are y'all? This is about to be bad. This he is not him. He's not him. I'm, and, and it's crazy. He literally was not him. He's like the slowest on the. So he he comes through, and then of course the the monkey jumps on his back, probably yep. with like one fifty left. And I'm like, just you know, just get it. Usually to me. you do a little like jog off before you grab. There was none of that. I had to almost reach over the line, grab it. I was I was pretty far behind at the time, but then grab I was able what? to. I was able to come back and, and pass the guy, the baton. Did you hear that? The baton. That was, the baton. Oh, okay. I was like, that was egregious. That was just <laughs> grab the baton. I had to reach over the line and grab it. Over, that <laughs> did sound wild. When he gave me the baton, he fell flat on the face. I had to get him off the track to move him. We ended up winning. Um, I like how casually you're like, he blew it, but I took care of it. But I took care of yeah, it. Dude, you don't no understand. Problem. Dude was... I think I split like 46 in indoor, which is impressive. It is very impressive. But it's very man, impressive. it was just um it just really makes like, you know, pressure bust pipes, but yeah. like yep. you can hide when you're on a basketball team. You can hide when you're on a football team. Sweatshirt. You can There you go. No pressure, no diamonds. No pressure, no diamonds. Yeah. There's, no, a, lot, I did, there's I did, a lot of hiding in different I didn't know we were gonna talk about track and field here, but you're you're 100 percent right. Like I wasn't I wasn't the fastest guy uh growing up. So I was uh, fast, but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's always, like, one or two guys that are faster. Texas. That's so, first grade, I'm, like, the fifth fastest guy in first grade. Now, how do I know that? Because I raced every person every single day oh, when wow. I got to Coppers Cove, Texas. Second grade, I'm, like, the fourth fastest. By the time I get to fourth grade, I'm the fastest guy in school. Right? So, I worked that grind. And the same thing happened to me in track because I didn't start track till seventh grade. So I do that, and I'm not the fastest in the hurdles. I'm not the fastest in the 400, and I slowly grind my way to get there. And that's why I think I love track so much because what you put in is what you're going to get out of it. And football is completely different. Really? You know, football, basketball, team sports, they're completely different. You could be the best in the world at your position and lose by 70. You could go out and quarterback and make every right decision, make every right read, every right check, and throw seven interceptions because, I know, ball bounced off somebody's hands or offensive line didn't block. Or you could play an actual decent game and get graded out as an A and everyone on TV is going to say you suck because you guys lost by 25. In track and field, when you line up and you run the 100, the 200, the 400, hey, what place did he get? <laughs> first? Okay, cool. He ran super fast. If you don't get first and you get last, well, he ran really slow. It's a very simple process. And I think finding that for people is, is hard. So I always tell people that play football, run track. You'll build your own self-confidence to know that you can do your job, which is something that we talked about a lot with the Ravens. What's the Marlon Humphrey story that you have for us from your time at the Ravens? Oh, man. I don't have any stories, bro. I'm I mean, Marlon's, model really, like, Marlon's an interesting guy. Really? He is. Very interesting. You know, model weird, weird thought process sometimes, but not weird in a bad way. You know what I mean? Like, 
weird in a good way. I'm with you. Like, we're all unique. But I don't have, like, a ton of, of Marlon stories. Like, you would think that Marlon, you guys know him now. So, like, when you come <laughs> in and you meet him, you think, like, oh, man, okay. I don't expect him to be hanging out with frat boys, you know? <laughs> but he just has to ask who he hangs out with. That's, that's, his, that's his niche. You need the cameras to turn listen, around. <laughs> listen, that's his niche. And college, is, college was a dream. But you know what I'm saying? Like, and he, he goes dream. to Alabama, and it's like, I don't have anything to say other than, like, I, I wanted to talk to you about this on RG3 and the Ones, but we just got so deep in the conversation, it, uh, it, it got bypassed. But, like, the damn resort you built. Like, yeah, that, 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 yeah, like, yeah. that is incredible. Yeah. Slightly. That did slightly happen. By, not that I'm mad at it, but <laughs> it, uh, it definitely happened by mistake. Yeah, that caught. Yeah. So... <laughs> It's, it, you know, it, all right, so. Go ahead. Come on. What's up? Long story short. Well, actually, it might end up being a long story. I see this. We're, it's during COVID. Okay. And my dad's like, you know, hey, son, we should go look at some land. You might buy some land one day. I'm like, probably not. But <laughs> I, like, there's nothing else to do. So, right, right. Like, let's, let's go out, out here and uh, go, go look at this, this, uh, this, this place. So it's me and my older brother. And we're looking at like 750 acres. And we're just oh, driving wow. all around. And That's I'm like, oh, man, this, this is a lot. And then his son's like, yeah, we got this across the street. And I'm like, well, let me see that picture again. And it's like it's like a, it's a piece of land and like three small like ponds. And I'm like, I look kind of nice. I'm like, let's, let's go over there. So we go check it out. I'm like, we're driving around it. it, it they don't really go over there at all. It was like 230 acres. Okay. So we're like, hmm, that looks all right. Like we're trying to like be cool. Me and my dad, we all get in the car and we're like, yo, that was nice. Like we're trying not to, you know, be too fanboy, but I'm like, yo, that was, that was fire. <laughs> I've never bought land before. Is there anything there? You're literally just looking at like land, we're lakes, literally, and so trees. The crazy thing about this place was there was a house built on the like, the middle part, which yeah. is like kind of the island part. Okay. But they probably got about 70% and a storm came through and they just never finished it. Okay. And so- Did it, you tear that thing down or? We kept it up for a little bit when we ended up buying the place, but then it just slowly started like falling <laughs> apart. So um, it, it slowly started because I think he built it with no like, regulations okay like the posts that were holding up the porch were just he just would cut a tree and just put, put the tree there. directly how it oh would. so he was old school building oh he house. was old he owed a sawmill so oh, was, okay you kind of do what you want to do, do but do it yourself kind of guy uh, if he would have lived in there it was gonna be a bad day <laughs> one day but anyway um so i end up tearing the house down i'm like i'm gonna build a house right here and you know the the property repeated itself i built up a house Got 70%, hated it, tore it down. Costed a lot of dough. Wait, you wait tore what? Down the OG I tore house, down the OG house, built okay. another, built another and then, house, and, tore it down. and then tore it down. Oh, my gosh. Go. How much money nice, does this guy have? It costed a lot, a lot. of money. It a lot he's, of he's money. He's got a lot of money. So, um, <laughs> um, I'm not counting his money. That one, that one money. hurt. That one hurt. Um, it, was, it was a, um, long story short, I fired my contractor. Oh, no. This it, is it was, real beef. Oh, was, this is real, huh? Yeah, it just was. I got done with the season. We lost to the Bills. I come back. He's like, Yeah, this is what we got so far. And I'm like, This ain't it. Like, this, is, <laughs> this, is, this is, this is, this is, that's what I'm thinking. But I'm like, You know what? Like, this is just going to be too much. I can't, I, you can't really fix it. Like, you can't. So I'm like, I got to stick with it. And then I'm like, Sitting there. It's crazy. One of the last conversations I had with my grandma was about that house. Oh, man. She was like, she was her and my auntie. She's like, so what do you think about that? My auntie's kind of messy. Oh, she's, oh, she's kind of messy. She's a little messy. So that's so. your messy voice. Yeah, you know, well, well, if, I can't wait. I, I'm, she goes. I'm she goes. She's like, so, so what do you think about the house? I'm like, ah, it's all right. And she's like, I told you, mama. I told you. I told you he wasn't gonna like the house. And I'm just like, yeah, man, it, it could be. 
my grandma's like, man, you want to build something that like people see and they're like, wow. Yeah. And what I had was not why it, it was very like, oh, nice. But it was like it one of those <laughs> like, said, wow. yeah, it was like, it was one like, of those, oh, like, oh, nice. nice. This is this is nice. Like when you see a baby and then someone's like, oh, your baby's so cute. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's really cute to the mom and dad. <laughs> it's really cute to the mom and dad. Like the mom and dad is always the everyone's baby is the cutest baby. But I'm like, oh, like oh, it's gonna grow into its look. It's gonna get oh, it. But ooh, nice eyes. So <laughs> I, I tore it down. So whenever I look at you know, everyone's like, oh man, you got a nice boo boo boo. And I'm just like, yeah, it is nice. It, it, but I, I just wait. So the one that's finished, you still don't like? No, no, I like that. Oh, okay. oh, so the one that's finished, you like that? Yeah. One. I like that one. Okay. okay, I like that one. And then I just started going nuts after built some cabins, built a yep. separate structure, pool gym, all that, and it's a uh, it's a whole yeah. Book your stay at Marquee. Book your stay at Marquee. You, you should you should have a he does he does weddings. We have some retreats. You should have a whole TV show spring. surrounding that place because yeah. it's unbelievable and it's like black people in the country. Which yeah, you just we, don't see very often. You, you don't know what I'm see saying? very like, often. I just you don't see very often, and that was kind it's not of a bad a, thing. It's just um, it's a rare thing. But you asked about a Marlon story, so let me give you one. All right, so I knew about Marlon from track and field uh, before I came to Baltimore, mm -hmm. and knew that he was a great corner. Um, you know, all pro, all pro Marlo, as we call him, uh, phenomenal player. But he had one issue, right? It was catching interceptions. Okay, so we'd be in practice. Now, I, I was a scout team guy. Like, when I came in the Baltimore, I was like the I was the fifth quarterback on the roster, right? First first round pick, second pick overall. I come in, I'm behind Joe Flacco, Lamar. Uh, was it Woodrum, Woodrum, some dude named Wood? Hey, preseason legend. Yeah, preseason like, legend. What was his name? It was, was it I think it was Woodrum. It was Woodrum. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember. Jake, Jake? I can't remember his first name. I'm sorry, man. He's a good dude. Great dude. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. But I'm, I'm like fourth or fifth on the, on the yeah. roster. So... The only reps I'm getting, I'm doing like the chase drills with you guys on the D line, where they have me like basically run around like a chicken with my head cut off, and they like try to cage me uh, with the way that they're pursuing. And I had to go against the the number one defense almost every single day in practice. So I'd throw a pass, and it'd be like a, a comeback, you know, a kitty route on the on the sideline, and Marlon would be like all over the route, and then we would still complete it. And I go to Marlon and I'm like, listen, man, I'm not trying to throw interceptions out here, bro. Like, I want to do well, but just turn your head to the ball and catch the damn football. And uh, you know, we had a we we had a we had a, a long conversation about that on the team, and just like you know, he's a pass deflection specialist, pass the punch, right? Punch, Peanut, punch, he yeah. punched the ball out. He really started focusing on that a lot, <laughs> and, and it was like the way for him to like. I, I didn't catch the I pick, but I got you a fumble. <laughs> Man, and that was that was a trend. But he's such a great cover corner. It's like knowing the different balances of when to get your eyes back to the QB when you're literally all over it and just making that play. And we talked with, with Jimmy about it. Remember when Marcus came in mm, yeah. and we talked with Marcus about it. And I think you've certainly gotten better at it, but that yeah, was like I, the, I think, that was the one thing that was like, yo, yeah, it'll take was, you to the next dude, level if you, you just pick this year. If yeah, you I just was, turn your head and catch the ball like that. Yeah, yeah, I was similar to probably like Jimmy, um, for sure. We were we were very like similar corners. Like yep. you're sometimes covering somebody so well, you just like literally turn around. I think when Marcus came, it was it was interesting to because I had never really been around ball hawk corners. Right. Um I think, you know, what made now what made Marcus so well, which I just, I just can't. I don't think I could ever do. It's just right. the, I don't care like thing yeah. of just like. Honestly, I know I got the third, but I see something and I'm about to just go. Like I, <laughs> I, I'm not able to. I was never able to abandon my like actual responsibility to the degree that he did. Right. Obviously, if you can do that well, you can be like Mark Peters and have. You know, I don't know. A how gazillion pick sixes. A gazillion pick sixes yeah. and all the stuff and catch picks and man to man when your man's on the other side of the field. And yep. it just I mean, he was he was just so like crazy, crazy good at, at, at that stuff that I just was but it definitely was like a it does a thing that took some it as odd as it sounded, I was I hate the back shoulder. Right. I hate the back like if, if I know the, you do. If we, if the court like that just, but it's but it's tough on any corner. It's tough on any corner, and it's just I still haven't quite found the best way. Now you're giving out free tape. No, but he's but he's not because he, he's got a, like he's got enough tape, yeah. tape there that people yeah. see it. 
Yeah. No, people like it. I don't, I just feel like I don't. This is the crazy thing, and I guess you're a quarterback, so right. maybe this is a good time to ask. I've never really asked somebody. Yep, this. Yep. The craziest thing about corner. Yep. You can have perfect technique, jam. Yep. You can literally do perfect everything, and Breach. then the quarterback will put it. The hardest passes to defend are a quote unquote bad pass, but as you guys were saying, yes. a pass to where only the wide receiver can catch it. Correct. Know? Those are like the hardest when it's at. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey on Kyle when it's at his right. his feet, Kyle's in exactly. position. Exactly, exactly. So are y'all just throwing off the... I know in the red zone, it's basically like... It's way easier to sp spot it. Right. But in the field of play, like, when it's supposed to be, okay, we're going to take a shot right here. Yep. But then you end up talking about, what is the idea there? Yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a little bit of semantics about, like, you know, the two best throws. There's an underthrown goal ball, Right. That's the that's yeah. the hard that's because, actually the hard, right? that's, <laughs> that's actually the hardest. No, that's thing. The it's it's going to get you either a pi or the receiver is going to adjust better than the db right. and and I say this and I mean it with all due respect. There's a reason dbs play db and wideouts play wide receiver. And now dbs in today's game are getting paid much more money, but you can't tell me that there's a, any db in the NFL that tracks a ball better than a wide, than a top level wide receiver. There's guys that track it well. But deep down the field, that's just not their yeah, thing. Trayvon Diggs tracks it. No one's he, tracking it better than a bet top wide receiver. Than, than, a, than a top yeah. wide It's just yeah. a fact. It's and just, it's yeah, not to say that they can't do it. And there are DBs that can catch the football, and they're just really good at their position. But from a quarterback's perspective, I said this to you before, and you've heard it, there's no coverage for the perfect throw. There is no and sometimes the perfect throw, throw isn't in stride, yeah. mm -hmm. running 50 yards down the field or across the middle where you catch it at five mm -hmm. and it's right in, your, in, right in your eyes and you just run with it. Like sometimes the perfect ball placement is the one to Kyle, I mean to Travis Kelsey on Kyle Hamilton yeah. where it's at his ankles damn yeah. near and he has to make that play and adjust. So from a quarterback's perspective, we just look at it as you want to give your guy an opportunity and you know that, like, if it's Diggs, I'm probably not going to try to throw a ton of back shoulders or a ton of just, like, hey, he's got to be down there somewhere yeah, because I know he can track it. But for most DBs, they're so focused on the guy, you just want to give them a, a, what do we call it, a catch radius catch. ball, mm -hmm. right? The seams you see that get thrown. You're throwing it at the back of a linebacker's head because you just have, you know that most backers aren't going to turn around no and make that, really like, around. Brian Urlacher's and, like, Ray Lewis at the end of his career, like, they knew. They've been playing the same coverage for 15 years. They understood, like, they're going to try to throw this over my head here. But from a quarterback's perspective, it's more about what's the perfect throw in this situation? In the red zone, it might not be a face ball, right? It might be a... A nut shot ball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to throw it low, let him go down and make the catch, protect himself. But there's different situations where that happens. But uh, I feel like that's where, where it comes into play for guys like yourself. It's my, my advice, and I told you this in Baltimore years ago, you probably don't remember anymore because you've had so much success since, since I've left and, um, and are doing a great job in everything that you do. But you're so fast, you can play the back shoulder and still not give up the big play. That, that, to me, is <clears throat> the secret sauce for corners like yourself. You're st a strong corner, but your track background makes it to where you don't really just get a run by a lot. So if you play heavier into the back shoulder of it, you can still recover. Now, don't do that to Tyreek Hill because <laughs> they're not trying to throw Tyreek Hill back shoulders. Yeah, no. But you got to know the receiver. You got to know the situation. Um, for fast corners, I always tell them, just bait them into it. It's what Deion Sanders did. Dion used to bait quarterbacks into thinking the guys were open because he didn't just try to stay on the upfield shoulder all the time because he knew he could outrun them and he could track the ball down the field. So that'll be my advice moving forward, my guy. All right, RG3, make Finishes sure you guys, with some ether. Yeah, make sure you check out the RG3 and the Ones pod. I've been, you know, I was a fan of you growing up, but a fan of you in the content game. I almost don't want you to go back in the league because I don't want to lose out on the content, but I feel like you would do both. Yeah. I feel like you would do both. So check that out. Super Bowl week, appreciate you.